Hi everyone, in this lecture, we will be discussing mitosis and cytokinesis. Let's first discuss the two events that occur in the M phase. First, we have mitosis, which involves the accurate segregation of your chromosomes. This is the process in which the nucleus gathers up and organizes its chromosomes and divides into two. Next, we have the actual cell division, which we call cytokinesis. And in this stage, not just the chromosomes that divide, but the entirety of the cell, which also include its different organelles and its cell membrane. Here we can see the entirety of the cell cycle, which is composed of the interphase and the M phase. In this lecture, we will be talking more about the M phase. You can watch a previous video we made on the different phases of the interphase. For the M phase, let's take a look at the different stages of mitosis. First, we have the prophase, followed by the prometaphase, then the metaphase, anaphase, and finally, telophase. Now, after all of these have been done, this is when the cell now proceeds into cytokinesis. In this figure, we can see that it is actually cytoskeletal elements that are the mediators of our M phase. In mitosis, we can see that the microtubules are the main mediators, and they form a structure called the mitotic spindle. Meanwhile, during the cytokinetic phase or the cytokinesis phase, you have actin and myosin filaments, which form a structure called the contractile ring. Next, we'll talk about the different stages or phases of mitosis, and we'll be highlighting the important events that happen in each phase. First, let's talk about the prophase. The first thing that occurs in this phase is the formation of the mitotic spindle. This is composed of the two copies of our centrosome, which also become the two spindle poles. In this figure, we can see the two centrosomes forming. And here we can see a fluorescent micrograph of those two centrosomes here and here. At the same time, the chromosomes start condensing into chromatids within the nucleus. Normally, in the interphase, these chromosomes are indistinguishable from one another. But in the prophase, they become highly condensed and visible using a microscope. There are two copies present, and they are held together by proteins known as cohesins. Next, we have the prometaphase. The first thing that occurs in this stage is the breakdown of the nuclear envelope, which you can see here. After this has occurred, the chromosomes now are able to attach to the mitotic spindle via their kinetochore microtubules, or the kinetochores. Since the sister chromatids are attached with two kinetochore microtubules, we call this as bi-orientation. And it is in this stage wherein the active movement of the chromosomes begin. As the chromosomes move around the cell, this is now the part where the cell enters the metaphase. The chromosomes keep on moving until they become aligned at the equator of the spindle. We call this structure as the metaphase plate. At the same time, the kinetochore microtubules on each sister chromatid attaches firmly to the opposite poles of the spindle. Once this has occurred, and all the chromosomes are aligned, the cell can then proceed to the next phase, anaphase. In this stage, the sister chromatids synchronously separate. There are a variety of events that contribute to this separation. The first one is cohesion destruction via the enzyme separase. Once these proteins have been destroyed, the kinetochore microtubules get shorter and start to pull apart the two sister chromatids or chromosomes. And at the same time, the spindle poles also move apart until they reach the opposite sides of the cell. Finally, in telophase, the two sets of chromosomes have completely arrived at the opposite poles of the cell. And it is in this stage that the new nuclear envelope starts to reassemble around those chromosomes. So now, we have a cell in which there are two nuclei that are formed, and this marks the end of mitosis. One thing of note that occurs in this stage is that the contractile ring also starts to assemble, and the cell starts to divide and enter into cytokinesis. There are two main structures that we need to take note of in cytokinesis. The first one, first let's talk about the cleavage furrow. Its formation begins in the anaphase, and this is the first sign that the cell is about to divide. 
It occurs along the long axis of the mitotic spindle, as we can see in this figure, or at the center of the cell. Underneath, we can see the metaphase plate or the aligned chromosomes. The reason why this furrow has to occur in the center is that it ensures that the cell membrane and the different chromosomes are equally divided among the two daughter cells. In some instances, we can also have an asymmetrical position of the cleavage furrow in which the furrow occurs eccentrically or off to the side. As a result, the two daughter cells become or give rise to two different cell lines. Lastly, we will be talking about the contractile ring, which is the actual structure that causes the cell to divide. It is an overlapping array of actin and myosin filaments, which you can see in this figure. Its formation begins shortly after the two sister chromatids separate, and the force generated by the contractile ring is actually caused by the sliding motion of the actin and myosin filaments. All right, so that was a short lecture on the different steps of the M phase. If you would like to learn more, please check out these two references. Thank you for listening. If you found this video informative, consider subscribing to our channel. Let us know what other topics you want to learn about by commenting below.